Welcome to the Bonsai Nook with Adam Ask Why. I'm into fusion, man. That's where the art meets the ego. Celtic punk, country rap, alternative metal, gypsy jazz, psycho billy, Nintendo core. Hi, I'm Adam Levine. Welcome to the Bonsai Nook. Today's lesson, grafting and fusion on a ficus benjamina, the so-called weeping fig. And it's gonna be weeping by the time I'm done with it today. Hey, Dad! Really? A ficus benjamina? What the hell are you working on that piece of crap for? Well, funny you should ask, son. Let me tell you why. Okay, let me talk just a little bit about some of the pests that we can get on a ficus benjamina. If you notice, this is a nice healthy leaf. And then you see these ones are curled up. This is evidence of a bug called a thrip. Um, it's a really nasty bug that has four or five life cycles. Uh, three times in that life cycle they're almost immune to to any kind of insecticide so it's tough to to kill them. Uh, the way I'm going to be working it, first I'll remove all these bad leaves, put them in a a plastic sealable bag and throw them in the, in the trash so they go away from my nursery. Uh, the second line of defense so I don't get re infestations is to use a systemic insecticide. I prefer to use granular and just so that I could pronounce it correctly imidacloroprid. Uh, it is a neonicotinoid or neonic class of insecticide and it's a little bit controversial right now. Um, there's some people who believe that bees are overly affected by this chemical. So the way that I, I protect bees is I don't use it on anything that, that has flowers. I do not use the liquid form, only granular, um, and bees don't really go on this tree at all. Ficus don't have traditional flowers. The ficus fruit is the flower, and the pollinator of a ficus or a fig is a wasp that does not live in Florida on this, on this Benjamina. So, I don't overuse chemicals because I don't really like dying, but sometimes that's the only thing you can use. This is actually uh, pre-damage, where it begins to, to fold the, the leaf up. Now, it's a really interesting life cycle. Um, you have you have your adults, and the adults uh, can fly. That's how they get from one plant to another. And then they lay eggs. Uh, and then you get the, the juvenile form, which you can kill with sprays, like a, an oil spray or, or a topical insecticide. And then, uh, and then they go into a pupal stage where they're totally covered and any kind of spray doesn't really affect them and they're still chewing on the leaf and then they go into the adult stage and 
and they fly away eventually looking for another place to uh, to infect so as you see I'm kind of going around thinning it out cutting off any anything dead um, nubs anything growing up or down or in the crotches kind of giving it like a little Brazilian wax uh, Is that a bonsai term? Uh, no, they did a lot of that you know for the synchronized swimmers down in uh, Brazil this year okay so we're all trimmed up um, the next step we're gonna scrub the trunk so we have a nice clean area to fuse and graft onto and do some grafting up here and we're gonna fuse this weird thing right up into there cut a big chunk match up the cambium layers and marry it into the root system there's some people who don't really think that grafting is a the natural way of making a bonsai but uh, grafting is done on multiple species from maples black pines uh, ju junipers uh, ficus grafting is done mostly on the ficus microcarpa in taiwan uh, there are some varieties of the microcarpa that the trunk grows better and then there are other varieties where the leaf shape is better where you get smaller internodes and smaller leaf size um, in, in grafting is probably the second oldest horticultural technique in the history of the world the first being air layering okay in order to lay our separate tree into here first I need to make a space in the root system for it to go and we want it pushed up as close as we can into the, the trunk so I pretty much massacred the roots where we're going to place our new tree I could save some of these and graft in various places but I don't think I need to do that today so this one goes down this one comes up I don't really recall where I got this from, but it's fortuitous that I have it. Uh, I don't need this guy. Except for maybe to use the graft. So now we need to get this root mass to be only about that big to marry with our big beast of a tree. I'll do that with a saw. This is the manly part of the show? Yes. Okay, so now the next step, I've roughed up all the edges of the root ball on the big tree, and I'm just gonna scrape the bottom. We're not really doing a repot, we're just going to plant this into a bigger training container so that we can maximize growth. Some people might say that I should cut out some of these big roots, but they're holding sugars, they're holding energy um, that might be important for something way up on the top of the tree. Okay, this is what I'm potting it into as a training pot. Um, it's almost like it's 
uh, one of the pond baskets or the colanders that they've been using to grow black pines. Uh, I'm not really sure what it's used for. It was made in Mexico. Anyway. It's got a chop. It does have a chop, yeah. It's like a... Uh, it's a sun going over the mountains. Oh, it doesn't get it. Shit. <laughs> Okay, I have enough space in the root area to put our fusion tree. I just need to figure out the best place to expose the cambium and tie it in so that it, it, it really makes a good bond, the small tree to the big tree. Um, that's going to take a little finagling and uh, less talk, more work. Not really sure why this died the way it did, but uh, getting it down to the living bark. It's critical to get all the dead wood out of there. The the rotten. Uh, yeah, it'll it'll just keep rotting. I really want it to start healing. So making it smooth is going to make it want to heal more. Hey son. Yeah? Give me that hemifer. What the hell is a hemifer? It's for pounded nails, you fool. <laughs> so did he go? We're going to grind out the trunk a little bit so the... I can stick the uh, the wood in. I'm getting these as tight as I can. So I've taken a heavy wire and secured over the top here. I could probably pick that up by that root now. And back fill it filled with soil. I'm going to put a whole bunch of fertilizer. And we're going to sit this down and we're going to let it grow. Probably for about a year or half a year, and we'll see what happens then. This is the granular systemic insecticide. Uh, what systemic really means is that the, the tree's roots take it up into the vascular system of the plant, and when the insect chews on the plant, it poisons it, and uh, no more insect. Okay, so to, uh, to kind of recap what we did, uh, did a pruning, uh, removed damaged leaves, except we forgot that one and that one, uh, from thrip damage. Um, we were doing a union graft a fusion graft of, a, of another benjamina plant in order to number one fill in a scar number two give me a branch here and a branch here and another aerial root to balance these aerial roots here uh, we did a kind of a rough repot put it in a grow container fresh soil a uh, crap load of fertilizer literally uh, put down a systemic insecticide to battle the thrips and uh, now we just have to find a place in the shade for a couple weeks and just let it grow um, you'll need to stay tuned uh, 
maybe about six months for an update on this so make sure you subscribe bookmark go to the blog adamaskwide.com uh, in the soon to be open adamsartandbonsai.com where you can buy American Bonsai tools apparel uh, or you can just send me money <laughs>